So this is the game that uh, I tried to play last time. Turns out you just gotta give it about five minutes to open for some reason. Okay, so this is like a, a tactical war game thing here. I don't know, choose a campaign, original campaign, sure, let's get started. Casual, sure. If it makes it go faster. Since the necromancers started the Great War, every city, every village, every farm was drowned in fire and blood. But the people survived. They won. By the grace of the gods and the power of steel, the undead were banished from the lands of the living, and the necromancers were destroyed. Legend preserved the name of the hero who rose up to unite all the kingdoms in the face of the ruthless enemy, Svenfeld. The events of the distant past live on, thanks to the gray-bearded storyteller. I'm not gonna lie, I don't, uh... I don't have high hopes for this. <clears throat> Master Pringus, the innkeeper, was busying himself shouting at the hapless maid, his tavern, squatting in a wretched village on the banks of the river Zafari, was rarely busy. This afternoon was an exception. The company of stern-looking men spread across two tables. Their crude weapons were propped in the darkest and dustiest corner of the main room. Get a move on, Sheila. Mugs won't fill themselves. Master Pringus went out onto the porch for some air. Sheila could manage. The arrow seemed to whistle out of thin air. It pierced his throat. Silence reigned for a few seconds. It was shattered by Sheila's shriek. The shrill sound roused the drinking men from their lethargy. They tumbled over each other to reach their weapons, cursing amidst the overturned furniture. A young man in plate armor was the first to find his weapon. He charged out of the tavern, brandishing his long sword. Um. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Left mouse button, right mouse button. Next. Using potions, okay. So how do I... Using spells, scroll the mouse wheel up or down to zoom, move with the arrow keys, how retro. Uh, shaded hexes, movable action points. Have been a, okay, so yeah, red is, can move but not do an action. Unit has enough action for orange to attack after moving. Green will have more action points after attacking and moving. If the unit has entered into enemy zone, get him over, okay. Boy. Oh. Well, it's that. <laughs> okay, thanks. Thanks. <clears throat> One terrain, penalty, zone of combat. Oh my god, this is like a tabletop game turned into a, a tactical computer game here. Start the battle, press space. Let's begin. Um. Can he can he shoot from there? How is it? Oh my god. Game. Either give me all the tutorials at once or don't. chance in a percentage. Okay. I guess we will wait. I can attack a hedge. Okay. Go attack the mighty hedge. Is that it? <laughs> That's it. Okay. Next probably don't want to be attacking those actually I probably want to uh, save a little bit for myself for cover and whatnot oh we got is that a guy from me or is that who is that that's blue that must be just just a peasant okay Um, how about in turn? Oh, I see. The peasants are on our side, too. Oh, 
Okay, my turn. Let's pick this guy to attack. I missed on a 70% chance. It's a little close for your ranged attack. 85% chance. God damn, these guys have a lot of health. Move down into cover. Is, like, what? What is the point of moving these guys? They don't have any attack range or anything. Should I have him come around and help? This hedge is actually now in the way. So now I need to get it out of the way. That's all my action points, though. Next turn. Peasant is probably going to die. Oh, wow. Okay. Do I have... Shield. Unit receives plus five attack evasion. Uh, what is that? Bleeding? I'm bleeding. Fantastic. Heroic cry. Friendly units within two hexes receive morale five and 30% chance to overcome panic. I don't think that's an issue right now. has a 65% chance to shoot. Missed. Okay, of course he did. Well, 50% chance to shoot that guy, 65 for this guy. Sure. Okay, this is like XCOM rules here. You're gonna miss on anything except a 90% chance. about to die. How about we move to here? It doesn't seem to give cover bonus, so I don't know what's up with that. So there was an option to lower the hit points by like 30%. I think I might want to do that. These combats are going to take forever. Now oh, that one's dead. I thought it said that after green, you would have a chance to have more actions after a movement attack. This bastard just keeps getting away from me, so I'm going to have to get real close. to finishing him off. I can't move on the road for some reason. There you go. Okay, that guy's gonna get hurt. coins in there, it looks like. I should probably run away, though. This guy. How is there a 20% chance when you're right here? And yet that guy had a 30% chance. This game makes no sense. It's even worse than XCOM odds. He 
they just gave up. Okay, I <laughs> mean that's fine too. Actually, here, try and beat the barrel first. Nope. Okay. Victory. Um, the army camp. You can hire level up units. Resurrect dead units. Assistance by potions, okay. You have two liquid fire potions, equip your units with them. Uh, it seems like I might want to give those to the archers, just in case somebody gets too close to them, you know? Give them a little bit of a chance. Okay. Well, now what? How the hell do I get out of here? To the world map? Select a new mission. Okay. One week ago, Roderick had fulfilled his childhood dream. He'd formed his squad of mercenaries, the Silver Griffins. Now Roderick was canvassing the taverns of Merstone for recruits in the evening gloom. He selected only the finest physical specimens who he believed would follow orders. He was proud of his progress thus far. When he had coaxed his Silver Griffins out of another tavern, Roderick observed a bedraggled man staggering towards him. The man's clothes were torn, and he was caked in mud. The stranger collapsed at Roderick's feet. In the evening gloom, curious Mr. and residents gathered around. Uh, please help zombies to the north farm. The man spl spluttered. He p pawed at Roderick's boots and fixed the mercenary with a desperate stare. There are children, please. With his utterance, the last ounce of the man's strength deserted him. He groaned and curled into the fetal position. Start the mission. The silver griffins walked wanted a chance to prove themselves to forge a reputation. Roderick steeled himself and led the Silver Griffins out of Mistern. As they approached the farm, the mercenaries could make out shadows lurching between charred buildings in the pale light of the moon. Unpleasant sucking noises, like boots being pulled out of a bog, drifted across the night sky. Sure. <laughs> sure. Okay. Oh, my god, more tutorials. Before the battle starts, you place your units marked on the hexes, okay. So what the heck are these? Ghouls! Okay. Well, um, it seems like this is probably the best place they could be. Maybe we'll move them down a little bit. And uh, start the battle. Press space. Game, come on! Units rotate facing in directions, if possible, rotate facing with each other. To rotate the facings, click left mouse button on it. And click left mouse button on one of the arrow markers. Okay. Well, we may as well just move forward inch by inch and let him come to me. game it it pauses every five damn seconds to tell me something each hex has an illumination level I don't care it's not that complicated to figure out all right move on How do I... You should get bonuses for surround here. That one hit. I guess we'll block here. Okay, bleeding already. That's good. How did how did that one get attacked? Okay, 
That one's about to die. Ghouls are tough bastards. That guy's gonna need some help. I guess I could come down here. He's gonna get surrounded though. Maybe move him up here so that next time he can help out with that ghoul. Yeah, pull them to me. chance, apparently. This guy gone yet? Yeah, he has. a ghoul over here, too. Okay, that guy sucks. Boy. Okay, now I blocked myself in. That's not great. I can still... Oh, because it got reach? I guess that guy had reach, so... Well, I hate the idea of going over here and then triggering this guy. This one in the back is about to die. He's got bleeding, which means uh, he's got three health points. He receives one damage per turn. He's going to hit one. He's going to be hanging on by two. He's almost dead. I do not want him facing the ghouls. Let's block him off there. Oh, no. Now the ones are coming. Great. be really spectacular if you guys could hit something. Alright, now we gotta block these things here. Or else we're about to die. Let's get you blocked in here. hit anything. Better come up here and help. He might he might be safe there, I don't know. And then this guy defensive stance? Do that, sure. Unit receives plus six for one turn. There you go. For fuck's sake. <sighs> okay. He got two hits. Well, this, this does not bode well for this guy's mercenary company. If they can't hit half the time. Hey, Pocket Ninja. 
I'm doing all right. Okay, there's one down. guy getting into trouble here otherwise I would have him go around but I don't think that's the right idea there don't get bonuses for the surround or flanking. It seems pretty apparent. That's, that's not good. Like, for, for a tactical game like this, you need some stuff like that in your game to be tactical. Oh yeah, I forgot these guys had that. Uh, Stormbringer, one strength, plus range. Oh, fuck. More tutorializing. Yes, with enough experience, can level up. Found an artifact. Yay. Give it to that archer. Level up. Select an improvement. Plus one strength. Evasion or accuracy. I would say we all need accuracy a little bit here. But I don't know if that's the proper thing to give to these guys or not. Maybe everyone just needs accuracy. I think that's sort of a... Oh, they got a lot more level ups? They got a lot more level ups. Okay. Magic resistance, accuracy, evasion. We'll do accuracy again. This guy, morale, evasion, health. Um, I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. Probably morale then, huh? No experience, no experience. We need... Uh, well, I guess health. Evasion. Uh, give me something I can actually use. These guys are crunchy, so they'll probably need evasion. Give them some health. Yeah. Okay. Missing children. The Silver Griffin stood at a distance and stared at the burning corpses of the unfortunate farmhands. Like a ghost, a fragile young girl emerged from the pallid light of the breaking dawn. Hello, what is your name? Roderick said as he squatted down to meet the child's vacant stare. Lisa, my brother and sister have been taken away. The girl's lips trembled, but she was in shock. Any tears that flowed were snatched by the heat of the fires. Who took your brother and sister, Lisa? Where'd they go? Lisa nodded her head to the north toward the city of the dwarves. Kern Boram. A horrible man, and bony people took them. She shuddered and then broke down, throwing her arms around Roderick's neck. Sobs overcame her. Oh boy. <laughs> if he was commanding skeletons, Roderick surmised that the man must be a practitioner of the forbidden art of necromancy. He was deciding who should escort Lisa to Mistorn when four zealous peasants armed with pitchforks bounded up. We'll help you find the little ones, boomed the lead peasant. Pain here can look after the gal, the peasant gestured at a weedy young man. I appreciate the enthusiasm, it'd be best for you to remain here. Nah, screw it. We'll need everyone. Let's kill some peasants. Oh boy. Fasil was the tracker of the Silver Griffins. Ten years ago, he had been a poacher in the forests of the benevolent King Merovengo. Only a year ago, new poaching laws had made Fasil's life untenable. He had turned to the mercenaries. In the morning light, Fasil could easily discern children's footprints. They staggered and stumbled alongside the shirred tracks made by an adult human and at least a dozen skeletons. Oh shit, the silver griffins followed the prints. After 50 meters, the children's prints became more sporadic. Perhaps they had been carried. The trail headed towards Kern Boram. The mercenaries labored all day across gullies and over wooded hills. Exhaustion set in as the sun started to nudge against the horizon. 
Those children are still in the clutches of the necromancer. We must push on through our fatigue. Every minute may, may be precious. And besides, I don't think we want to stop anywhere in the middle of the night. The silver griffins pushed on through the darkness. Fasil found it increasingly difficult to follow the trail, but the cloudless sky offered some hope. <laughs> this is hopeless. <laughs> it's too dark. We should camp until morning. The night is clear. We should continue. The children nearby can feel it. We risk alerting kidnappers. Ah, the middle one. Oh, swordsman health. Minus one. Despite the moonlight, the pursuit was treacherous. One of the griffins slipped on a slimy outcrop and fractured his leg. It was bound as best as possible, and the chase continued. Other than this incident, Lux smiled in Roderick's company. Fasil espied the kidnappers within an hour. Sheltered in the bottom of a dry ravine, a man lay huddled in a worn cloak. The smoldering embers of a fire illuminated his sleeping face. A ring of skeletons stood like statues a few meters away from the necromancer. In the midst of the circle, four children tossed and turned. I mean, all in all, this is probably a bad thing because in fantasy, um, the knight gives the undead advantage. So, I mean, this is probably not the best choice that I'm making here, but, you know, whatever. We must save the kids. Ah, more tutorials. I don't care. I'll figure it out. Hiding behind my wall? What the heck, guys? You were all gung ho before. We can just attack him from a distance away. Okay. Skeletons, not too bad. Guess, well, I could punch through there. Maybe. Yeah, it's uh, just a tactical war game. Alright, that one's down. What's wrong with you? I've been cursed. Of course I have. How, how strong is that bush? Holy crap. We can't even defeat a bush. I don't think we have very... Oh my god, more tutorials! Stamina, morale, I don't care, go! Yay, we beat the bush, finally. tree there. So, it uh, looks like we're probably going to end up facing her soon. We'll let the peasant go die first. <laughs> hey! There's got to be a sound. Don't don't we have a, a drum roll sound effect? that necromancer. Oh, cool. Awesome. Well, that's great. What are you afflicted by now? Slow down. Because that's exactly what we need when we're trying to chase an enemy across the map. Really? 
Uh, hold down control key, you can find out which characteristics the selected unit will have at any point during the battle. I do not care. I guess if that's the worst she can do, that's fine. It's not my guys. Peasants have been getting in my way. Too far away. Dead. Hooray! A regeneration built. The kids have been saved. Roderick looked down on the necromancer's corpse with a grimace. A ring set on a sinewy finger grew, drew his gaze. It was silver and crafted in the form of a serpent. The snake clamped a jet black stone within its jaws. A dormant memory hid just out of Roderick's grasp. There was a significance to this ring, but it eluded him. He pocketed it. Pocketed it. <laughs> The four rescued children huddled together in a patch of sunlight as the party buzzed around them in sympathy. The children were shaken, but otherwise all right. The silver griffins returned the children to Mistorn, where they were greeted by the village head, a round man with a flushed face. He sweated profusely as he wrung Roderick's hand in gratitude. He wrung his hand, not shook his hand, he just wrung it. Can you imagine how awkward... Like, he, he's giving him an Indian burn on his hand? Is that what he's doing? He wrung his hand. Like, when you wring your own hands, like, that's, you know, you're, you're, you're doing the, I mean, you can't see what I'm doing. But, you know, when you wring your hands, you know what you're doing, right? How do you wring someone else's hand? Like he's just, <laughs> he's just pulling and, and, and pawing at this, this other guy's hand. That's really freaking awkward. Who wrote this shit? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I'm just he's not shaking his hand, he's just he's just awkwardly rubbing his hand <laughs> over the <laughs> it's like, get get off of me. What are you doing? We are indebted to your kindness, mercenary, the fat man gushed. We'll induct the orphans into the Golden Shield Order. Don't worry, they'll be they will be well looked after. Now that's awkward. We'll induct the orphans into the Golden Shield We're putting the kids into a cult. Roderick accepted thanks on behalf of his company. He interrupted the man's praise by taking out the necromancer's ring. Have you seen this design before? Roderick said. Hmm, I've heard of the pleasant group that sport this motif. They call themselves the Road to Eternity. Pleasant group. Hey, he must be being sarcastic here. They spend their time abducting people, reanimating the dead, and just generally exploring the forbidden art. Nasty people, but a pleasant group nonetheless. They're very polite. Thank you for saving the children from them. Okay, um, magic resistance seems like a good thing right now. Ugh, fuck me, if I could play the game, the size of your army gradually increases, go to the mercenaries and potions to have, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Magic resistance seems important to them right now. Accuracy, you have yet to level up. Uh, stamina, stamina could be good. Accuracy. Okay. Well, um... I think, uh... I think I've seen enough. <laughs> Got seven out of eight people, huh? The arrival at Arcton? Oh, boy. Well, I mean, it's it's a very basic tactical game. Um, I mean, it's not terrible. The writing is abysmal, but yeah, uh, whatever. 
Apparently, they felt it did s w well enough. Oh, hey, there's even a manual. There's even a manual as if the tutorials weren't enough. If you're really desperate to learn, you can come in here. Boy. <laughs> and this arena, I'm assuming the arena's a chance to to just train and practice, but eh. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, no, I, I think I think that's enough for me to know this game. I mean, it, it's kind of a joke. Like the game is a little bit. I guess it's one of those that I could, you know, just kind of just kind of have a joke with. But um, boy, nah, I think we'll we'll call that good for right there. <laughs>